Okay, that time again in the Eastern Woodlands. Time for another solo overnighter in the woods. This one's going to be an inspired build. Let's get to it. Okay, so taking my Y branch, I want to wedge this bad boy up in here high enough to where it can become my ridge pole. That way I can suspend from it. So this end up here is pretty much wedged in there. Now I have to support this end until I can get her tied off. And I'm thinking we make a hasty bipod. That way I can just spread it out, land it in there temporarily while we tie it off. Okay, several people are seeing this Y branch right now and they're thinking, what's he up to this week? What's going on? Okay, well I mentioned that this was an inspired build. Several weeks ago, somebody sent me this photo. And in that photo, it appears to have a Y branch butted to a tree that's tied off diagonally, creating a ridge pole. From there, we have two Y branches or wishbones that are attached to that ridge pole. On the bottom, we have horizontal poles attached to our wishbones with perpendicular slats, boom, 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 that create a bed. Okay, so the same individual, or actually individuals that sent me that photo, wanted my spin on it or my take on it. So, other than the amount of work involved, and for me, you always know there's going to be a lot of work from overnighter. But for the ordinary person with resources or limited resources, it might be a lot of work. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to say it's probably a 6 or a 7, okay, to do it right. And looking at that photo, in my opinion, there wasn't enough slats in there for a bed to be comfortable, okay. So the guy that actually made that was probably about four hours short and had to stop. Um, but the amount of work aside, two things jump out. First off is the sheer weight. Having all of that wood hanging off of a ridge pole that's simply tied off, if the wood isn't green or a strong wood like say oak or hickory, it could break. So the weight needs to be scaled down, first off. Second, finding those wishbones or those Y branches that are the perfect size, minimum inch and a half diameter, that are at least that long, that come down this way, that are wide enough to support a bed, okay, that we're not going to roll off of it, is hard. I personally walked around for three and a half hours and found one. And when I actually got looking at it, I didn't want to cut it because I only found one. So why waste the resources? So I'm going to give you my take on this. We're going to take that idea, we're going to twist it, we're going to beat it up, we're going to chop it down, repackage it, and we'll have fun doing it. Okay, so I've done this bipod lash several times. I'm going to show you a hasty bipod. All we're going to do is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to tie an arbor knot around both my poles. You see me do that a million times. And I'm just going to pull this tight and ratchet it down. From here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this twice. I'm going to frap it twice is basically what I'm doing. And we're going to finish off with just a clove hitch right here. Creates an X. There we go underneath the X. I'll pull it tight, lock it down, and finish off with an overhand knot. Here's our hasty bipod that we can adjust. It's not structural, so I don't care. It just gives me something right here to place that ridge pole in while we tie off our diagonal rope.
Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run this pole against the tree, tie it off with arbor knots, and then add this T right here up against the tree as well and lock it off. Okay, so taking my mule tape, I want to go ahead and join them using a the fisherman's knot. So all we're going to do is we're going to go around it once, and then back through, pull it tight, do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go ahead and go around it, and then through it. Once we have that, we can pull them tight. Okay, right here all I did is I created a stop cut. I sawed directly into it and then a 45 degree angle and created an L7 notch. I'm gonna toss some cordage around this one as well as that one and we'll form a gigantic loop and then stake it to the ground. Okay, so I tied the fisherman's knot and I went ahead and made a gigantic loop. And I failed to show you this part before, but you wanna go around a tree or even a stake in the ground. I'm gonna use a tree because it's right here, right behind or in line with my shelter. If you don't have it, get a long stick, pound it in the ground, and make a stake. Okay, now I showed this probably about four or five videos ago. It's called a windlass. We have a gigantic loop in our notches and around our tree, or in your case, it can be a stake. I'll place a stick between my loop, and I'm going to simply spin it around. The more I spin it, the tighter it's going to be. What tends to happen when you make these swing arms like this, kind of like a large cook set, the front wants to lean down just like this okay so i'm going to prevent that by pulling the back side tight to keep it up and we're also going to be secured and diagonal to our tree this will lock it down and guarantee it's not going to move there we go getting tight now i want to stop it all i got to do Push that stick down a little bit more and it will stop against the earth. Like right there. So we're gonna keep cranking this bad boy like an old Model T until we get it tight. And it looks like we're moving the swing arm a little bit. So we'll stop right there. Okay, that windlass is outstanding. It worked great. Now we're taking the exact same concept to our previous notch, the one on our ridge pole. We're gonna make a gigantic loop go around our tree and tighten her up. What you just saw was a prototype from Self-Reliance Outfitters. It's a bedroll cover. And what it actually is, is a piece of thousand denier that's sewn together and has grommets at both ends. And it can be used one of two ways. Either stuff it full of foliage, leaves, dead grass, things like that, and sew the ends up and create a browse bed. Or what you can actually do is what we're doing today, run two poles through it and create a raised bed.
Okay, so far so good. We're looking outstanding. Our poles are inside of our sleeves and we have our spacers or our spreader bars. Now let's have a quick discussion on those. That's exactly what they are. Spacers or spreaders. We're keeping the poles spread apart. Now I've been doing this style bed, different configurations, but this style for over two years. And without fail, every single time somebody says, those spreaders should be underneath all the weights on the poles. Guess what? I want all the weight on these poles. All the spacers do is they keep them spread to the edge of my sleeves. That's all they're doing. So now we're going to suspend our bed on our ridge pole using a clove hitch on top. It's going to give me two pigtails. I'm then going to tie those pigtails to my poles. Okay, so here's two attachment points and two more attachment points right here. I think it'll work. Okay, so, I mean, worst case it rains, all I gotta do is untie this and flop it over and tie it off right here. And we have a self-contained unit where the tarp is actually wrapped around our shelter and it will move as the shelter moves. And I'm liking that. So I'm thinking fire pit and then chow time. If you like what you see here, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. Then take it a step further, grab your cell phone, download the free YouTube app and sign in. This will give you push notifications when my new videos drop.
Okay, so the one thing out here in the Eastern Woodlands that I've not done yet is make a composite bow drill set. Now we've done the hasty bow drill set where we cut corners and save time, but a composite meaning different types of materials. So I'm looking around here and I see arrowwood as far as the eye can see. It's long straight shafts and it kind of resembles, in my opinion, mule fat or seep willow on the west coast. So I cut a piece of that off, it's dead, dried out, and it's the exact same size as a bow drill spindle. So I'm going to go ahead and taper one end off like usual. I'm going to use some red pine fat wood for my bearing block. I have a piece of tulip poplar for my hearth board. And then we have a curved stick, which I put a string on here, bowling on one end, and then a half hitch down here for our actual bow. And we'll see if we can get her done. So here's our tulip poplar. Split that in half. And then make our hasty set. I'll saw cut here and then baton it off. About right there. It'll work. Just like that. Mm.
As always, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon Influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. And if you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. As we're talking about right there, kielbasa, potato, onions, and cheese. A little bit of this ass kicking moonshine pepper mash. Outstanding. Mmm. Catch you all in a few. Not a lot going on tonight. Um, just basically my thank you. Thank you all my old subs, all my new subs. Um, appreciate everything you guys are doing. Thank you for watching my videos and sticking with me for this long journey. I was asked to keep doing what you're doing, watch my videos all the way to the end, share them with everyone everywhere, and let YouTube know you want Corporal's Corner, and I'm gonna give you Corporal's Corner. Oh, I almost forgot, we got two important updates. The first one, I went ahead and enrolled in SNHU online, and I'm going to finish my anthropology degree with them. So I have about a semester and a half, or maybe two semesters, but as I progress, I'll let you know what's going on. And number two, my knife. The Camp and Trail Corporal Kelly Edition from PKS Knives goes on sale finally in two weeks. So look for this at the end of September. The Self Reliance Officer's influencer link is inside my description box. Check her out. And here we go. Here's our shelter. And to be really honest, I couldn't be happier. I am happy AF right now. This was an inspired build, and I drew my inspiration from that picture that was sent to me, along with a bushcraft buck saw. That's where the windlass came in. We'll talk about the shelter tomorrow. On that note, I'm going to lay here and be happy. Catch you all in the morning. Still waiting for the uh, Back to the Future 2 power laces. Yeah, about six years too late for that. Okay, so last night there was no rain in the forecast, and I simply just tossed the tarp over me and I was fine. But had it rained, all that weight from the water would have pushed that tarp onto my body. And you don't want that. Most of the time you want to stick the tarp out. So, in lieu of staking when you're off the ground like this, what you can do is you can weigh the tarp down. And that's exactly what I did right here. 
I took two sticks and I created a lap splice using round lashes and arbor knots. Then I simply tied that splice to my loops right here. If you don't have loops, you can use grommets. And it actually pulls the tarp down so any rain, wind, or snow will slide right off. Got a kick to it, but it's outstanding. Okay, so let's talk about the shelter. What did we do here? Well, we created a raised bed that was a bucket list inspired item. Okay, it was inspired by that picture, and I mentioned last night, a wooden buck saw. Now, on the buck saw, we took the windlass tensioning device. You have a vertical, a vertical, and a horizontal, and a saw blade, it's all compressed and pulled together using a windlass, a tensioning device, an old medieval machine. And that's exactly what we did right there at the top as well as the back. We pulled it this way and up as well. The back end there was raised a little bit higher. When I jumped in, my body weight leveled her out. The sleeve right here is a prototype from Self Alliance Outfitters. It will be Coyote Tan and a thousand denier and will be available in a few weeks. So look forward to this. And the bed itself is nothing more than our standard stretcher bed. We only utilized clove hitches and arbor knots. So in my opinion, we accomplished our goals. It was a lot lighter, no lashes, and no Y branches needed. And there you go, solo overnight building a self-tensioning shelter. Another bucket list item crossed off. As always, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One on my Amazon influencer page, and two on my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. And if you're interested in Corpus Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now please do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, and then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you next time. Oh, almost forgot. It's complete with a roll-down door. Boom.